better late than never. Welcome. It's favorite. <laughs> Fucking Anton Landers. I like really like the bank up drawer. This is Ceases. 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 Yeah! Tyler, your rem check is so fucking sexy. Let's go, baby! Ceases. Fucking Anton Lander. Ah, this is so dumb. Every week, I have fun pushing buttons because I'm not allowed to do it anywhere else. Sexy. So I do it here. Better late than never. Welcome. Episode. Brrr, I'm going to say it's 58. Somewhere around there. We're closing in on a full year of this podcast. And I just want to say thank you for all being here. Just like I want to say thank you to the audio department for being the title sponsor of the podcast. Of course, the audio department works to create a safe space for creativity and collaboration for artists and musicians to realize their potential and share their message through sound and story. Go check them out at theaudiodepartment.ca if you want to book a little studio time. Maybe you want to record a podcast like this one. Maybe you want to record the best diss track you've ever came up with in your life and you need a place to do it. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Uh, anyway, you can do it there. The auto department.ca, that's where you need to go. Get some details. Welcome to a brand new podcast. Can you believe it's been a week since we last chatted? I can't. I'm very excited to be here chatting with you again. We've got a whole lot of other stuff to talk about. We've got a whole lot in general just to talk about. But as we do every single week, I'm going to start off with the question of the week that I asked last week with Nick Alberga. Go back and listen to that interview, by the way. He had a couple of takes on Jack Campbell, fighting and hockey, skill and numbers. They kind of blew up. If you missed it, go back to listen to that podcast because those clips when we posted them on Instagram, whoop, shot off like a rocket, right? This week, though, or uh, I asked Nick last week, what is the worst part about Christmas? This week, I asked, what is the best part about Christmas? And we knew this one was coming. There's a lot of great answers coming in. Uh, this one is just, honestly, it's my favorite answer so far. This one came in from Maynard. World Juniors, everything else about it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says a little Christmas spirit like saying everything sucks. Cameron says, movies, specifically watching Kevin attempt to mutilate robbers with booby traps. My wife and I have a soft spot for Christmas movies. Gives us something to watch together if you've been paying attention to Oilers Nation Radio our boy Liam he has been watching a lot of Christmas movies get in season get festive this week I watched what the fuck was that movie called Bad Christmas Moms or Bad Moms Christmas Edition or something with Mila Kunis all I know is I paid attention to about 12 minutes of the entire movie because it was fucking terrible at some point that's fun When it comes to Christmas movies, that there's a bunch of them that are awful, but then there's others. There's like staples like Home Alone. Come on. Doesn't get any better. Connor says, 1,000% it is the time off work. Not a huge Christmas family, but I will take the holidays guilt-free. I respect that. Some people like to say, oh, I love to spend the time with my family, and I love to spend the time with the children. You don't really. You just want days off work. I respect Connor for saying it like it is. Mainlining the coffee says the yearly Oilers need a D man narrative. Yeah, that one doesn't seem to go away, does it? It's like the evergreen. It's the evergreen question when it comes to the Edmonton Oilers. And frankly, I don't have an answer for it. They need a defenseman. Who's it going to be? I don't know. Are they going to get one? Probably not. Catherine from the Edmonton Humane Society says all the food. Hard to disagree with that. Hard to disagree with that. One of my personal favorite things is that it doesn't matter what day it is, what time it is. You can just have a cocktail if you want. It's like my good friend, the towel boy, told me once. He's like, Christmas time is like you're at the airport. Time doesn't matter. Situations don't matter. You want a cocktail, you have yourself a cocktail. You want to pour yourself a glass of wine at 9 a.m.? I ain't judging you, playboy. I ain't judging you. Red wine lifestyle forever. That guy, Mike, says, gotta be never knowing what day it is with limited responsibility. I love that too. There's that, what would you say? The 10-day, two-week window, the Christmas week, the New Year's week, that whole time period where just time stands still. Nobody goes into the office. Like at Oilers Nation, we still keep the content going out, but nobody's going in the office. At least I'm not. I'll be working from home. I'll be knocking content out. Maybe have a little slight buzz going. Maybe a four out of 10, three out of 10 if I'm being responsible. But ultimately, I ain't driving anywhere that day. That's my point of the story. 
Pine Apple Pie says, a couple of days of being lazy and eating and drinking all of the things. Just as simple as that. Doesn't get any better than that. John Ashton, Alberta says, watching a billion hours of hockey and getting day drunk while I'm doing it. Oh, and I guess the family and friends are... <laughs> I guess the family, friends, and their BS or whatever. <laughs> See, I like those. I like the answers when they're honest. You know, I like the answers when they're honest because the reality is... We just want days off, like I said earlier. I want to sit in my PJs and I want to have coffee and Baileys until two, three, four in the afternoon, and then I'll switch to Caesars. Or I just start out with breakfast Caesars. They're basically tomato soups, evil cousin. You know? Of course. I imagine we're gonna have I got a lot of voicemails today looking at the voicemail buttons. So we're just gonna get right to it. Let's jump into the news. The news with bagged milk keeping you up to date on all things Edmonton Oilers Edmonton and surrounding areas the first story we are starting off with this week is about a woman who got bamboozled question mark or did she not do her research well of course I'm talking about Jackie Thomas there was an article from torontolife.com that blew up all over the internet today and if you haven't seen it I respect it because that means you haven't been in a whole lot of time on any social platforms. I've seen this same story on Twitter a bunch of times. I've seen it on in my group chats a couple of times. I've seen it on Facebook. So this thing is blowing up everywhere. And the title of the article is, I moved to Alberta and hated everything about it. After three months, I came back to Toronto. This is by Jackie Thomas, her account of moving out to Edmonton, which of course, it wasn't really Edmonton, was it, Jackie? No, she spent about $400,000 on a home 30 minutes south of the city in Leduc. She was hoping to do some kind of sex in the city lifestyle that saw her going out to Cactus Club five days a week, which I just, I love. Listen, I'm a fan of Cactus Club too. They're, uh, They're lettuce wraps. They're legit. I'll eat those any day of the week. But what I will also say is that I don't think there's anything overly bougie about going to Cactus Club. You know, so having a sex in the city moment at Cactus Club, that just made me laugh. Spending 400 grand on a house in Leduc, there's nothing wrong with Leduc. Nothing at all wrong with Leduc. I've got family that lives there and it's a nice little community. But what I will say about Leduc is nobody is going there for for the nightlife. You know, unless you're checking in at Habaneros every single night because their margs are delicious. Again, that's just a fantastic little restaurant, Leduc. Um, there's, we're talking about a city of 30,000 people. That is a small town city. That is a small city, I should say. That is where a lot of people go. They they just kind of want to chill, start a family, live on the outskirts of the city a little bit. You're close enough if you want, but you're out on on the outskirts. So I found this whole thing very, very funny. And there's a couple of quotes that I just, (laughs) that just made me laugh so much. Like the idea that you were going to move to Edmonton to save money on taxes and rent, all of that makes sense. I've been to, in the last calendar year, I've been to both Vancouver and Toronto, two of the most notoriously expensive cities in Canada. And I love to look at rent at apartments and stuff when I'm cruising around new towns or new cities that I've not really spent a whole lot of time in. And it always blows my mind. I was down in Vancouver, a little vacay with the missus, and we were just looking at some of the beachfront properties. Like, who doesn't want to live near the ocean? So I was looking at some of the apartments, smaller than the condo that I'm recording this in right now. Like, I have a townhouse in the West End, and a third the size of where I live right now. And I'm not even saying that my house is big or anything. It's really not. But I'm saying a third the size of where I live. And it was probably twice the price. And that was just an apartment in Vancouver. Two bedroom, one and a half bath, maybe double the price, if not then some. In Toronto, same thing. When we were there in August for the nation vacation to go out to the Jays game, it was the same thing. I was just like, I wonder how much these apartments are. Like we were just staying downtown Toronto and I would be like, I wonder how much these are. They're expensive. So the idea of moving out west, coming to Alberta because the taxes are cheaper and there might be opportunity for just a, a change of life, I'm good with all of that. What I'm not good with is making a decision like that <laughs> and spending less time researching the place you're going to live than most of us do with an Airbnb. I went to Sylvan Lake last summer. I don't remember what it was. I spent probably more time scoping out which hotel slash Airbnbs that I was interested in, then my sweet friend here spent looking at a house. And to drop 400K 
Well, I think I'd do well in Sex in the City. I told him that leaving would help me build up my savings and allow me to slow down the pace of my life. Besides, I hadn't had an adventure like this in years. Again, you want to change your pace. I love all that. I love people that pick up their whole lives and go somewhere else. Our boy Coomsey that works for us at Oilers Nation, I guarantee you've read his stuff. He's done it a bunch of times. I respect the hell out of it when he does it. I've done it. Cam went and lived in Ireland for a year. Cam went and lived in Toronto, I think, for probably two years. I went and lived over in Southeast Asia for a year. Sometimes you just got to pick yourself up and you go and you move and you go and try something different. I respect all of that. But to have no idea what you're in for or where you're going. After making the move, and again, I'm just quoting here, not long after I made the move, I went out on the town by myself. I asked strangers where I could find a nice lounge with a shisha and friendly (laughs) 30-year-olds. I love the idea of walking around Leduc looking for a hookah bar like, hey, where are all the fellow 30-year-olds at the hookah bar? Again. You are in a town, a small city of 30,000 people. That is not the vibe in Leduc. If you're in Edmonton, if you're downtown Jasper Ave, you can find all that shit if you want it. I guarantee you. I promise it's there. You're going to live in the pint on a nightly basis if you're downtown. I promise you. But if you don't do any research, well, and I continue. The strangers replied, what do you mean by a lounge? That was the first red flag. It was the f- it was the start of a quiet, disappointing week, and nobody was out and about on the weekend either. The buzzy city energy I craved was missing. Edmonton was nothing like what I remembered from my brief visits, despite the fact that I went to some of the same bars and hangout spots. You were not in Edmonton. You were in Leduc. <laughs> Uh, when I moved into, I'm from a small town. I grew up outside of the city, about 45 minutes north of the city. And when I moved into town, or into the city, I guess, one of my old man who's lived in a small town his entire life, he goes, well, you're in for a much busier kind of life. There's just more people. There's more stuff. Everything moves faster. And that's not even to say that Edmonton's a huge city or anything. I've been to much bigger cities than this. I'll tell you one thing. Like when I touched down in Hong Kong, that shit is intimidating. But I also don't expect to be in Leduc. First of all, she doesn't even know where she is. She's calling Leduc Edmonton over and over again. It was as if the moment I started paying property taxes there, the dating scene had gone dormant. Most most people my age were married, and they went straight home after work on weeknights. I reluctantly reduced my outings to once a week, which did force me to spend time with myself and probably save some money. But after six weeks, I got depressed. I I was used to finishing work and heading straight to the Cactus Club. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there ain't no cactus club in Leduc. There's a couple in the city. I live in the West End. There's not. There's one not far from me at the mall. I go in there sometimes. They got good Caesar deals on Sunday. Was you listening? They also got those tasty, tasty lettuce wraps that I mentioned earlier. But again, I was used to going straight to cactus club. At least living there made good financial sense, I thought. My expenses were $2,400 a month, so I rented out a room for $900 per month in August. Then, in October, my roommate left and I couldn't find anyone else to replace them. The Toronto rental market never sleeps, but Edmonton seems to die down after the summer. Again, you are in Leduc. I received offers to open up a room for $700 per month, but I didn't think that was worth living with another person at that price. The house was messing up my budget. Well... The problem I have here is that you spend $400,000 on a house as a single person, not really mapping out what that looks like in terms of mortgage and property tax. (laughs) (sighs) Eventually, I realized that most of Alberta's ads are for manual laborers and skilled tradespeople. If you work any kind of corporate job like I do, the money opportunity is back east. Case in point, in early November, I was offered a director of training role that I really wanted. The job was remote, but the caveat was the successful applicant had to live in Ontario. I wasn't even mad. It was my ticket out of there. I screamed, I'm coming home. At least my place in Edmonton's suburbs. At least we're getting a little bit closer now. We're referring to Leduc as the burbs. Again, we're talking about a community that's 30 minutes south of Edmonton, if you don't know where we're at. I'm thinking of my boy, Sam. If you're listening to this in Australia, my dude, we are talking about a place that is not Edmonton. I started to look online for rentals in Toronto. I chose to rent and not buy so that I could have extra cash on hand for once as I was back in the city. That choice was consistent with my real estate philosophy. Well, I I got questions about your real estate philosophy. Again, you bought a $400,000 house, which isn't a problem, by the way. I have no issue with you buying a $400,000 house, but if you're going to do that and you're going to live by yourself... 
I mean, I live by myself. I mean, Mrs. is here half the time, but like I live by myself. I pay the bills by myself. I would make no sense for me to move into a house bigger. than the, Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the house I live in currently is probably too big for just me and my dog. I could probably, actually, I know I could. I could downsize quite easily from where I'm at as a single person. I don't have a whole lot of stuff. I don't have a whole lot of stuff. But I don't need a $400,000 house. I don't need a family home for just me. Luckily, my cousin was leasing out her one-bedroom condo near Square One with a parking and a locker for only $2,300. I jumped at the opportunity. In the end, I returned to Toronto after three months with $550 bump in my rent, and I was out an additional twelve dollars because of the moving costs. My trek to Edmonton, Leduc, ended up being an expensive midlife crisis, but if it keeps me from pulling a stunt like this again in the future, it was worth it. Now I tell people who are considering leaving Toronto not to uproot if they have any intention of living in the city again. Not everyone has the financial freedom to come back. Why would anyone want to leave anyway? Toronto has jobs and entertainments galore. You can be at the park on a random weeknight in June, and the atmosphere is amazing. You won't find such a vibrant place anywhere else in Canada and definitely not anywhere in Alberta. Other cities just don't have our energy. Well, let me tell you again for the first time that you lived in Leduc. (laughs) That's like somebody in Pickering, Ontario, saying that they live in Toronto. It's not the same. So to say that there's no nightlife and nothing to do in Leduc a a city of 30,000 people, what were you expecting? Then again, when you do no research whatsoever and move across the country, well, you kind of get what you deserve, don't you? I guess your Carrie Bradshaw moment is going to have to come somewhere else. Maybe you might move to Westlock. It's kind of by Edmonton. I mean, in the grand scheme of the world geography. Sure, I mean, it's probably about an hour and a half north of the city, but it's close enough. Well, I moved to this city with about three, four thousand people in it, and I can't find a cactus club anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to pile on because obviously that she's had a tough day on social media today. I heard that some of the accounts went private, and the internet's going to internet. But there, this this article was written so hilariously that honestly, when David Quadrelli, who is our editor in chief of the network, when he sent this to me this morning, I thought he was sending me an article from the Onion. Or the Beaverton, or whichever you prefer. I legitimately thought this was parody. Because there's no way that somebody ends up in Leduc thinking they're in Edmonton and then calls out the entire province of Alberta. One thing I did like about it, though, Gord knows if you're a hockey fan that Oilers fans and Flames fans, we go at each other a lot. But there's one thing that we don't allow, and that is somebody from Toronto to shit on Alberta. The way that this article united this province is one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. And uh, for that, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for uniting Alberta because we haven't been this united in a little while. Yeah! If you haven't read the article, I will put a link to it in the podcast article on OilersNation.com. It's going to be right at the top of the article. So go check that out. It's very, very funny. If you want to make yourself laugh about just how just silly the whole situation is, I love it. And again, if you're in the dating scene and you're looking for somebody... Being out in Leduc, a community where, you know, a lot of people probably are married and settling down or at least calming down with a family, that ain't it. Unless you go to, um, let me think, what else is in Leduc? Maybe you just go hang out at the outlet mall. You know, you hang outside the Nike store and see what happens. There might be somebody there. There might be somebody there who also, like you, is there to save money. You know, I'm just thinking out loud here. Go hang out at the airport, right? You can go into the, uh, what's there? The Canadian brew house that's on the main level there. <laughs> it's kind of like Cactus Club. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Fuck, I love that. Please go read the article if you have it. It's hilarious. Getting back to the Oilers, though. It's been a week. It has been a week since we last recorded, since I like to check out the schedule since the last, over the last seven days, the Oilers have a three and one record. I think that's the first time in a while that I'm doing this podcast and we're doing the schedule. We're doing the recap where I have a winning record to talk about. So before 
or after last week's show, I should say, the Oilers just dummied the Coyotes. And on that podcast, I said, this is a game not only that you have to win, but you got to flex a little bit. And boy, did the boys do that. And then on Friday, they ended their ridiculous losing streak against the Minnesota Wild. Probably one of the most complete games that they that they played. That was a 5-2 win. Unfortunately, the luck against Minnesota ended there. One of the worst efforts we've seen in a 2-1 loss on Monday. Stuart Skinner, though. He was fantastic in that game. And had it not been for Stuart Skinner, we're probably talking about a much different score than a 2-1 game, but I digress. Last night, Oilers wrapped up their quick little two-game, two-night road trip with a shit-stomping in Nashville. Leon Dreisaitl with five points in that game. Five points. The guy can do whatever he wants against that franchise, and there is nothing they can do about it. It's sexy, it's silky, it's just all kinds of handsome when Leon Dreisaitl is out there. Frankly, if it was my opinion, or if it was up to me, if I was in control of the Nashville Predators, which I probably should be, I'd just slap Leon's handsome face right there on the front of the jersey. I don't mind the Predators jersey, but if you're going to run with that ugly shade of yellow, Leon Dreisaitl's face will make that look 100% better, I promise you. Looking back over his last 21 games against the Predators, he has got 35 points. That is 22 goals and 13 assists. That is just ridiculous. Other news from last night's game against the Predators, our boy Zach Hyman. I love this guy more than anything. First NHL career hat trick. It took him 450 games to get there, but our boy Zach Hyman, an engine that won't quit. I was actually surprised when I heard that. I think I probably heard that before, but I was surprised to rehear it from Jack Michaels last night. Zach Hyman, he works so hard. He's got skill. I mean, he's not like a pure finisher. He's not like a, um, you know, like a, a Tarasenko or something like that when he's on his prime, but... The guy can put the puck in the net and to see, have him get his first NHL career hat trick, something that Toronto could not offer him. You know, I love that. Another one, another big piece of news that came out of the week, Kaylor Yamamoto got his first NHL goal or not first NHL goal, first goal of the season. Who Lord. And you know, he needed that one. He was gripping the stick. That's not to say that he was playing poorly, but Kaylor Yamamoto is a guy that needs to get some points. He needs to feel good about his game. And since returning from injury, actually, he's he's had a decent little start here. In five games since, he has got... Uh, or no, so, yeah, in, five, in the last five games. So I guess he's played six games since he came back from injury. He has got... Three, four points in that five-game stretch. He had two assists against Arizona. He got that goal against Minnesota. Nothing the last couple of nights. Sorry, I've, I've, I cannot count. <laughs> three points in his last five games. They included last night's game. I just can't read. You know, they updated the old spreadsheet on me. <laughs> three points in his last five games. I'm just hoping he can turn it around a little bit. I really, really am. I just, I the Oilers need him to be picking up the pace a little bit. They need him to be contributing. They need him to be scoring goals and chipping in with points. And it looks like he's starting to get there. It looks like he's starting to get there. Uh, Another thing I want to give a shout out to Evander Kane. He hasn't played since early November. It's been more than a month now since we've seen him on the ice. But in the community, you got to like what he's doing. Last night on the broadcast, Evander Kane, they did a little feature on him doing a shopping spree for about 100 kids in the Wetaskiwin and Masquachis area. At least that's how it seemed like. And it was just really nice to see Kane supporting the community. He said on his Twitter account that this is a place that is supporting him, so he wanted to do the same. And I'll read that entire that entire thing for you. But it was just it was just nice to see a guy giving back. All in all, Evander Kane probably spent a drip in the bucket when it comes to just his his worth, his 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 salary even. But it was nice to see. And his statement on that video was the holiday season is a truly special time of year for many, but for some, the holiday season can be very difficult. The other night I had the privilege to treat a group of thoughtful, bright, and inspiring kids with a fun shopping experience for everybody involved. If you haven't seen the video yet, go check it out on Kane's Twitter feed or on his Instagram feed. He's interacting with the kids. He's interacting with their parents. He's spending some time with them. And let, and we've talked about this on Oilers Nation Radio. This is the kind of stuff that is going to turn a lot of these kids into Oilers fans for life. Just a quick little interaction with a dude who's on the team, a star player on the team, that will change you when you're that age. And I just want to give him some props for doing it because... A very, very nice gesture. Kids were buying all kinds of toys that you love to see. Some of them even, they were spending that money on groceries. 
Evander Kane found out they were spending the money on groceries, went and bought them some stuff anyway. So I just like to see that. That's the kind of thing we love to see in this community. And I, uh, I just appreciate that he's getting out there. You know, there's a lot of injured players that once they get injured, you never hear from them again. Not so much with Evander Kane. So I just want to give him a quick round of applause for that. In other news, Frank Saravalli reported for the Board of Governors meetings that the salary cap may only go up by a million bucks next year. And if you know or have been paying attention to the Oilers cap situation, that's not ideal. We heard earlier in the year that the cap could be going up as much as four million bucks, but the Oilers were going to need some luck if that happened. They needed to get that last little bit of money the players owed the the owners from the lockout paid off so that it could rise. But only a million bucks? Well... We've got some issues. Let me walk through what some of the summer to-do list is. Maybe we can size something that makes sense here. You know, yes, Apuliarvi, he's a restricted free agent with arbitration rights at the end of the year. I'm going to go ahead and say that that three million bucks is going to be free and available. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know what a yes, Apuliarvi trade is going to look like, but I'm going to, I'd bet Jay Downton's money that he will not be in a weather next year. It breaks my heart because I love the kid, but that's just my prediction. Argue with me if you want in the comments. I will absolutely take it. Next up, Derek Ryan will be a free agent next year. He made $1.25 million. Maybe he comes back, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just have a different option internally or otherwise that could potentially fill that spot. Matthias, Matthias Janmark, he is making uh, $1.25. I could also see him just walking. I don't know. I don't know. Matthias Yanmark, thoughts? Eh. Dil- uh, Devin Shore, his $850,000 two-year deal wraps up next year. I could see him being moved on from, so there's a little bit of money there. Clem Costin, he is a restricted free agent with arbitration rights at the end of the year. You are keeping Clem Costin. That dude is winning over this city in a big way with his physicality. He's got a little bit of skill. He's not afraid to mix it up. Evan Bouchard, restricted free agent at the end of the year. This one is going to be interesting. Last year, Evan Bouchard was the highest scoring defenseman the Oilers had on the roster. Hasn't exactly had the smoothest start to this year, but he's going to get paid. I don't know what that raise looks like on the entry-level deal that he's currently on. However, we know what happens when you bridge guys like this too much, Darnell Nurse. Darnell Nurse took two bridge deals before eventually landing on a $9.25 million contract. I think we can all agree that had they skipped that second one, I I don't even remember if they were able at the time, to be fair. Had they skipped that second bridge deal, we probably wouldn't be talking about a $9.25 million defenseman right now. I caution them to do something similar or not do the same thing with Evan Bouchard, I should say. If you can clef bomb this dude, you clef bomb him. Seven years, 4.1, whatever that equivalent is now, you got to try and make that work because I promise you it's going to be a bargain by the, end of the, by the end of the year. Stuart Skinner also, he is going to be a restricted free agent with arbitration rights. That one's going to be interesting too. What do you do there? Jack Campbell ain't going anywhere at 5 million bucks. He had a good game last night. It wasn't perfect. He allowed the first shot in only a minute into the game. I was a little bit nervous, but Soup settled down from there. You got to give him some props for that. But what do you pay Skinner next year? Can you pay him three? Can you pay him less than three? I have no idea. But Stuart Skinner is an interesting option or an interesting wrinkle here because obviously the guy is playing out of his mind this year. You're not letting him go anywhere. And finally, Ryan McLeod is also a restricted free agent with arbitration rights. He took a haircut to make the cap work this year at the $798,000 deal that he signed. I don't know that the same is going to be true next year. I know he's only got three goals right now and he's been injured for the last little bit, but... If you think that he's going to take another discount, well, we shall see. We shall see. Coming off the books, Milan Lucic. Still paying for him to be a Calgary Flame. I'll take that, by the way. That comes off the books as well as Sexy Reg with the last $1.5 million on Sexy Reg. Still $1.9 million of dead space for James Neal for the next two years. I don't regret that trade at all. But the point here is that if the cap only goes up by a million bucks, we could be in trouble, friends. We could be in trouble. Changing gears from around the NHL, Alex Ovechkin. I didn't, 
I got to tell you, if you asked me two years ago if I thought Alex Ovechkin was going to break Gretzky's goal record, I would have said no way. Our guy's backing into the back half of his 30s. He is just not going to get there. His body is going to eventually give up on him. But at 37 years old, he is still filling the net. At 37 years old, the dude just hit 800 goals and he's got no, like there's nothing that tells me slowing down. He's going to get there. He's going to beat it. My question for you listening to this is, do you want him to? Because I I just think it's inevitable at this point. He's got 94 goals to get to before Gretzky. We've only played 30 games in this season. He's got a lot of runway left this year. In the next two years, he's going to get there. I actually think this is really good for the game. Having records only be set you know, long before social media, long before any of us were even watching. I was like, I remember Gretzky's retirement. That's the stage of Gretzky. I really remember. I remember LA Kings Gretzky, St. Louis Blues Gretzky, and eventually New York Rangers Gretzky. That's the one I remember. So to be alive with this guy, and I remember when he got drafted, to see him doing what he's doing right now is really impressive. And as much as I thought I didn't want him to get there because I'm an Oilers fan to my heart, man, the guy, the guy's unit. The guy's an absolute unit. He's just been healthy this whole time, and it's just been really incredible to watch. I don't know if he's going to get there for sure, but man, would I bet Jay's money that he would. The News, brought to you by me. If you want to sponsor the news, hit me up, bagmilk at oilersnation.com. This is actually one of the most listened to parts of the podcast. I've got the analytics looking spicy looking spicy uh real quick for my friends at betway want to talk about a couple of bets that have been hitting for me lately i've been telling you on this podcast for the last few weeks if you are a better and you want to get in on something that just seems to be dialed in right now over one and a half power play goals just keeps cashing for me and the only problem i have with this is that my friends at betway are starting to figure out that there is always going to be not always but you know what i mean over one and a half power play goals in a Oilers game. Either they're going to score two for themselves as they did last night, or they're going to pick up one and the other team is going to get one as well. You know, the other bet I want to talk about for Betway is Leon Dreisaitl over three points last night. That was my risky business bet at plus 300. So five bucks. That was my $5 bet turned into 20. I looked at that and I was like, man, I know Leon owns the Nashville Predators. I know he does. We all know he does, but Three points in the NHL is not easy. <laughs> well, my guy ends up scoring five and makes my three-point bet <laughs> look like free money. If you want to know whatever I'm betting on, my friends at Betway, check out oh, the Risky Business article I do at OilersNation.com every single game day. You can see where I'm at. I just put it in right there. What do I bet on? You can follow along with me. Last night, I had a couple Leon bets. The first one was the over three points at plus 300. I had another one for him, plus 200, goal and an assist. Come on. Come on. Leon Dreisaitl versus the Nashville Predators could be part of my retirement plan going forward. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just going to put that out there. You're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bagged Milk. I would suggest you like and subscribe right now. Otherwise, the puppy gets it. For my friends at Trilogy Oldfield Rentals, TrilogyRentals.ca, it is time for the Righteous Act Beater. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Trilogy Oilfield Rentals are an established provider of oilfield rental tools with full-time operating units in Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. If you need anything, you check out TrilogyRentals.ca. They've got the tools, they've got the expertise, and they will get your job done. When it comes to the right sack beating this week, all I can think about as I'm cruising around in my beautiful Alfa Romeo from Alfa Romeo of Edmonton. I love this car so much, by the way. I'm going to go into that a little bit later. All I can think about is how sketchy some of us are driving around the city right now. I don't know what it is. Like is. I'm going to say that Edmonton drivers are not the greatest at the best of times. We talked about the fact that nobody waves anymore when you let them merge. And that's a big problem for me. If I find out that you're not a waiver when you merge, you are not getting any of my Subway six foot sub. None, zero. You can look at it. I can throw a tomato at you, but that's all you get. But in the winter specifically, 
It's like we don't remember that the roads are a little bit slick, that the roads are going to be a little bit greasy, and that the best approach to handling traffic in Edmonton in the winter is just to leave early. If you can. Or understand that you're going to be late. But the point is, you got to slow it down, man. I'm driving on the white mud in the Alfa Romeo. I am feeling good. My buns are toasty with the seat warmers. My hands are toasty because I got the heated steering wheel. But people are buzzing around me going 10, 12, 15, 20 kilometers over the speed limit. Which in the summer, I'm like, hey, speed on, baby. You get a ticket, that ain't my jam. But now in the winter, don't do it. If you have to slam on the brakes, you are hitting somebody. And then I have to try and slam on the brakes. And then I'm probably hitting you. We need to work together out here because, man, driving in Edmonton is chaos in the winter. If it's not the construction everywhere that just gets, seems to get started at the end of every summer and bleeds into the winter for whatever reason, I have no idea why that happens. I assume it's probably cheaper to build stuff in the winter because nobody wants to work. But, man, between the construction and the traffic and the people just being assholes, like, I don't understand it. Dude. Your SUV looks cool, and the big tires are legit, and I appreciate the way that you can drive real fast, but motherfucker, you ain't stopping that fast, and it's really annoying to me. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. I see that I've got a couple of guest righteous sack beatings today on my board, and the first one comes from The Shepherd. What have you got for me, sir? Hey, bag milk. One thing that's really been fucking bothering me since I heard it on the podcast a couple months ago is how many people in Oilers Nation, God bless you all, don't know how a fucking confession works. (laughs) So if you don't know what uh, the shepherd is talking about, I do every now and then I do podcast confessions where the point of it is that we just share shit that is embarrassing about us in the safe space that is this podcast. But what it always turns into is an ask me anything, which I really don't mind. You guys can always ask me anything you want, and I'm going to give you the most honest answer that I possibly can. But it always turns into an ask me anything, which I find hilarious. And if you've ever heard me do a podcast confession segment, there'll be like five people that get it and 20 that don't. I find find that very funny. Podcast confession. Everyone's asking you questions like, Don't you know what a a confession is? Uh, Like mine, for example. Big Curtis Joseph guy. Got a a poster from my parents growing up. I, uh, you know, cheered for him when he was in Toronto. Watched a lot of Hockey Night in Canada. Fucking Leafs. I can't... It's kind of shameful to admit it now, but, uh, you know, that's that's my podcast confession. Like, figure it out, Oilers Nation. I love you. One other thing. uh, The button for RSB that you want to see your man boy whenever it comes up it is so fucking loud on my speakers I don't know if it's a me thing or a you thing but anyway keep up the great work let's go fucking Oilers I'm gonna guess it's probably a me thing I'm gonna give you the button right now so earmuffs you want to see a man boy I'll show you a man kick me in the jimmy Evan, you are up next with a righteous sack beating, a guest appearance on the RSB. I swear to fucking God, if they don't call back this goal that was allowed with goaltender interference. <laughs> what? Like, what the fuck is this late call? <laughs> what are we talking about? I wish I could see the date when this came in. Like, on my on my soundboard, I can only see Evan RSB. I can't tell <laughs> when he submitted this, so I don't even know what goal you're talking about. Like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> Oh, oh, look, oh, look, no, now, oh, now, oh, now it's fucking no goal. Why can't you just say there's fucking goaltender interference? It doesn't matter. You just wasted fucking six minutes of the game, okay? <laughs> we could have, there could have been fucking six more minutes. Why do the pen, why do the fucking refs not have a penalty box? <laughs> fucking delay of game. <laughs> they would have got delay of game for that. Meanwhile, they fucking wasted about four minutes of my life. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Evan, you were fired up. <laughs> I don't even know again. Uh, I, I wish I knew which goal you were talking about off the top of my head, but Zach Hyman, who I just talked about earlier, he had three straight goals go to a review, so it could have been any of those. <laughs> I've got one more righteous act beating from Ben. It's coming up. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. 
<laughs> ben, what do you got for me, buddy? Yo, what's up, bag milk? This- oh, it's my boy Ben. If I remember correctly, you are a 13 year old gentleman. So I'm like, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what's annoying you right now. I'm I'm not gonna lie, Ben. I haven't been 13 for quite some time, so I'm curious to see what is in your teenage brain. This is gonna be my second voicemail, but it's a righteous act meeting. Mm. So hopefully this gets in. But it's the stupid Rogers Christmas ad. I'm not <laughs> gonna say the jingle because we all know it. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I. Oilers game last night. Sad loss. Sad loss. So that would have been on Monday. I probably heard it at least 10 times during the first intermission. They're really getting some mileage out of the commercial. I will say so. And it's funny you bring this up, Ben, because last week on the podcast, one of my favorite answers to what is the worst part about Christmas was that Christmas ad from Rogers. And uh, it's funny because there's so many people on social media that hate it. And when I think about that ad, I always wonder if the people at Rogers, if they knew it was going to trigger some kind of visceral reaction like this, or if they legitimately put that on air and going, people are going to love this. Like an ad that would say, buy our phones, they're good, would be better. Also... Also, an honorary one goes out mm. to Tyler. Oh yeah, of for, course. For um, not going to the Big Air contest. Yeah, that was rude. He had to celebrate St. Patty's Day. Yep. Yes, he's getting a start on he Thanksgiving. Sucks. No, I'm kidding. Tyler getting it's tripped. Pretty good. Yeah, I he's don't good. Know. Screw it, I'm tired. I believe I in you. I just ben. woke up. Oh, good morning. So yeah, see ya. <laughs> see ya, Ben. Leave as many voicemails as you want, pal. I'm going to play all your stuff always. I am raising the next generation of youth. That's what I'm doing. That's my contribution to the community. I live in Edmonton. Actual Edmonton, not Leduc. And I'm raising your children. Just so you know. There you go. There's three guest spots on the Righteous Sack Beating for my friends at Trilogy Oilfield Rentals. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. In the word of the Pet Shop Boys, I've got the brains, you have the looks. Listen to Better Late Than Never. I have got a busy, busy board of voicemails today. I've got a lot of them. You guys had a lot to say about Christmas. Or whatever. We'll see. We will see. If you want to leave a voicemail on the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Check out the link in my link tree. It just says the speak pipe voicemail. Or check it out on my socials. I'm always going to put that up in the days leading up to the podcast along with the question of the day. Dan is up first. What do you got, Dan? Hey, Bank Milk. I just listened to your episode last week mm-hmm. where you chatted with Nick. And the episode was great up until the end of the interview where he was starting to talk about Italian food. And I took exception to this when he said, Oh, Dan, if Dan is, so if you miss what Dan's talking about at the end of the interview, I asked Nick Alberga, I said, as an Italian man, I want to know what I should learn to master. Cause I love Italian food. I mean, who doesn't? I'm not Italian though. I want to learn how to master one dish that can really impress my missus. What would it be? And Nick said, if you can master a really good spaghetti and meatballs, you're going to be in game shape always forever. So, Dan, I'm really curious to see where you're going with this. Spaghetti and meatballs. I'm Italian. Hmm. I'm a first generation. Everybody else is from Italy except for myself and my family. I'm lo- then I'm really looking forward to where this goes because there is a lot of Italian dishes that I would love to make. Um, and I even said on the podcast last week, I'm trying to figure out, like I'm trying to master a cabanera because it's a really easy pasta to make, generally speaking. But the execution is very important. There's a lot of steps that you got to get right to make it good. Otherwise, it's really mediocre. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm still in the mediocre stage. Dan, what do you got for me? Uh, uh, spaghetti and meatballs isn't an Italian dish. It isn't. It's it's based off Italian cuisine, but it is not from Italy. I like that we're going authentic. I would have had no idea spaghetti and meatballs was an Italian. Just a, uh, what would you call that? A little fusion, maybe? Either way. Dan, what do you got for me? 
the correct answer for making Italian food was the carbonara. And ah, uh, yes, I'm getting it right. I'm getting it right. I knew I should learn how to make a fucking cabanera. I knew it. I'm going to master this, Dan. I promise you I am. I'm going to, I'm even getting like the proper ingredients, not like the, the lazy, like just bacon that you get from like, I'm going to go get the, you know, the pancetta and the whole thing. Like I want to do the whole thing. I want to make it legit. I, I, not only does he cheer for the Leafs, but he's an uncultured Italian and that hurt my heart and I had to vent and I don't know what to say. My grandmother would have had a heart attack if she heard that, though. And that's how I know that it wasn't a good thing to say. But uh, the Cabanera, I hope that went well for you. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm going to say, Dan, I probably, I don't know. I'm probably about four, five, six rounds into my Cabanera career. And I know that's still very young in the Cabanera career. But I'm getting better. I am getting better. The first time I had my, you know, my egg to Parmesan ratio wasn't great. My second one, it was a little bit too watery, I guess. Third one, dialed in. Fourth one, couldn't replicate. You know, that's where I'm at right now. I need to find consistency. I am a Edmonton Oiler depth scorer. I struggle with consistency on this dish, but I'm going to get there. I promise you. I want to give a quick shout out to ben's family for starting the ben stelter fund amen and for mcdavid and the other gentleman that i forgot his name that were saying they were willing to match up to a hundred thousand dollars in donations that come through to it and if you haven't uh, seen it already it is on instagram and you can follow there and uh and donate if you like yeah it's super cool and i just i i thought it was a, a great way to, you know, carry on Ben's legacy and such. And uh, if Bag Milk or anybody else on the nation hasn't talked about it yet, I just kind of wanted to give it its, you know, 15 seconds of fame. But uh, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to say, you know, shout out Ben. Shout out to Ben, 100%. Uh, if you want to make a donation, there are links available. I wrote about this on Saturday at Oilers Nation. Uh, just check out my random thoughts article on saturday and the link is all in there or you just you know fire up the old google machine it'll take you right there but yeah an amazing thing that the stelter family has done and ben's legacy is going to live on and it's going to be in a big way so i really really appreciate the work that they did there and they're just such kind people and the way they're giving back is truly truly remarkable all right so i just finished listening to the uh, Thursday episode of Real Life Podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to say, uh, credit where it's due to Jay. I mean, as bad as his Evan Bouchard take is, which I do stand by, I did dunk on him for that after all. Um, I got to give credit where it's due. That whole idea with keeping an extra can of pasta sauce uh, for like your leftover spaghetti or whatever, that is genius. I have no idea why I never thought of that. So, you know what, Jay, if you're listening to this, which you should, because everyone should be listening to Better Late Than Never. That's right. Um, dude, props to you. Like, I, I will give credit where it's due there, because holy, that is life-changing, keeping that extra jar of pasta sauce to mix in when you reheat your noodles. Um, also, that is part of the solution. That is part of the solution. Go make sure that you're leaving that on Jay's Instagram page, The Squire. Check him out, The Squire. Just say dad is part of the solution. He'll know what's up. Um, I actually don't have any memory of what Jay talked about with the pasta sauce. What I will say is I make a lot of pasta here at the Castle Milk because it gives me an excuse to drink red wine. I always make extra pasta sauce to either... Uh, one, just have like an extra tuppy full of it because I'm going to have some next day pasta or I'll freeze that shit. I'll freeze that shit and I'll keep it up and I'll pull it out a week or two later. Come on. Come on. That's just good living. Why the actual fuck is it Woodcroft's job <laughs> to challenge when there's goaltender interference? Can't the rest see it? Come on. Like, what are, you, what are they fucking voting or something? Like, did, is there interference? I don't know. Let's vote on it. Let's fucking, let's, let's play who can fucking get the most questions right. Then we'll, uh, oh, <laughs> for fuck's sakes. What the? <laughs> uh, I think that was an extended version of Evan's RSB from earlier. Still mad about the goalie interference. Buddy, you stay mad. You're like the Hulk. 
I, re- I respect it. You were the Hulk. You're just always angry. I love that. Apparently, uh, the voicemail I recorded during the second period of that last game, um, I didn't actually submit because <laughs> someone in my house uh, was drunk and, and didn't press send. But anyway, uh-huh. um, the other week, I was at the at the local pub, right? It was like Sunday Arvo lunch, as you fucking do. Go down for a cheeky steak. I love that you said Sunday Arvo. Not just in the afternoon. You abbreviated that shit. Australians abbreviate everything, and I love it. Schnitty with the boys, um, and I saw this. I saw this fellow in the sitting in there with his family, and I was like, "Oh, really? Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Like, just I love your hat. A fucking Oilers hat on. No way, man. I, this is insane. Like, I'm the only person who likes hockey within 500 kilometers of here. I live like, I live in Dysart, which is a town that was literally built just because there's a coal mine nearby, and they needed a place for coal miners to live." Middle of fucking nowhere, thousand k's from an ice rink, and here's this dude with an Oilers hat, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, man, I've lived in Edmonton for like twenty years. Some Australian bloke." Anyway, I was like, "What are the fucking chances?" The only person I've ever known within eight hours drive of where I live to like hockey, and he's a fucking Oilers fan, just goes to show no other no other team could survive out here in these harsh conditions. Fuck off everyone else. Play La Bamba, baby. Let's fucking go Oilers. Yeah, yeah. Hey Amen, Sam. The thing that I've always loved about Oilers fans is that we travel incredibly well. And we're always representing. I've been very lucky in my life that I've been able to travel a lot. And I always find Oilers fans in the most random places. And it's the greatest thing ever. I love it so much. Nelly Elephant packed a trunk and said goodbye to the circus. <laughs> Off she went with a trumpety trump and got promptly run over by a school bus. Yeah, Merry Christmas, kids. Not all dreams come true. <laughs> what? I gotta play that again. What the fuck? Nelly Elephant packed a trunk and said goodbye to the circus. <laughs> Off she went with a trumpety trump and got promptly run over by a school bus. Yeah, Merry Christmas, kids. Not all <laughs> dreams come true. <laughs> ah, donkey volley. I love everything about you, man. I really do. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. A bus got hit by, or a elephant got hit by a bus? <laughs> Doesn't even need to make sense. I love it. For whatever reason, last week, you did not get my voicemail. Either because I recorded it and forgot to send it, or you censored me. For using some dicey language to take shots at an Oilers podcast that rhymes with the Ralt of Rock. Now, I get it. Um, I'm going to say I didn't get it. I'm going to say I didn't get it. But generally, if you say something that's super annoying to me, I'll just I'll bleep you. Or super off color, not even annoying to me. Because you making fun of somebody else's podcast is really not my problem. Uh, so I'm going to guess you didn't send it, Nick. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. User error. User error. Language was a little harsh. So I'm going to record a PG-13 version. What's my least favorite part of Christmas? Well, that would have to be university exam season. This is a Nick problem, um, but you ask me. What are you studying anyway, Nick? What are you studying? How did you get into university? I'm I'm still rattled by you and you're just cooking... Frying up some onions and eating them like that. You're a fucking caveman. What what are you taking at school? But then at the same point, I would not be at all surprised to find out that you're a rocket surgeon or something like that. Yes, I know rocket surgeon is not a real job. Give me a break. I'm in third year neuroscience. What that means is... There you go. Neuroscience. I love this. The plasticity of the brain. Nick, you might enjoy this about me, or maybe you're just going to think it's annoying because you're actually studying the subject for real. I love nothing more than learning and trying to learn anyway, I should say, about uh, neuroplasticity and how the brain works. I have got a laundry list of audiobooks and books that I've tried to understand on the subject. My favorite book, Nick, and if you haven't read this yet, I absolutely recommend it. It is called The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. It basically talks about, and I feel like you and I are just having a conversation about a little neuroscience now, just a couple of neuroscientists talking to each other. And basically what it's about is how our brains have changed so much because of the internet. 
Have you ever noticed that your attention span is three seconds long? Are you a goldfish just like I am? Well, this book kind of gives you an idea of why. This one is one of the ones that normally I don't buy and reread books. I am going to reread this book. So that is my book recommendation of the week. I have never done that before. The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. Nick, back to you. When exams come along, holy shit, is it a lot of work. And, you know, when I was younger, my favorite part of Christmas was there was a lot of buildup. And there's just, there's none of that yeah. when all you're doing is studying fucking science. Mm. You know, even like you say, you can have a rum and coke on a Tuesday and no one gives a fuck. Yep. Well, I can't do that because I'm trying to cram a hundred years of genetics research into a weekend so I can nail a bio final on Monday. And apparently the university frowns upon bringing copious amounts of booze into the library. Ah. I learned that one the hard way. Ah. It's just, it's, it's a lot of work and it just really drains you and can take some of the excitement of Christmas away. Nick, but you're almost there, buddy. At some point in your life, you're going to look back at this and just be like, ah, ain't no thing. I don't know how often, how long you have to go to school for to be a neuroscientist. I can't I imagine it's substantial. Um, but one day you're going to look back on this and be like, oh, fuck, who cares? And you're going to be having that Tuesday cocktail. You're going to be the old guy like me, 37, cocktails on a Tuesday. Why? Because I can, baby. Because I can. I love that. You're studying neuroscience. That's super cool. I wish I like, I wish I was talking to you right now because I have so many questions. I legitimately am fascinated by the subject that you're studying. I love that. Said goodbye to the circus. Off she went with the Trumpsy Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. (laughs) Did we come in halfway through that? What happened there? Donkey Volley. You're a madman. I love it. See the elephant back to Trump and said goodbye to the circus. <laughs> Off she went with the Trumpy Trump. Good Lord. <laughs> I don't ever know what the fuck these guys talking about. Ugh. I will never get tired of you, though. I can tell you that much. Some people will be like, are you ever going to get tired of Doggy Volley's shtick? And I'm going to say no. No, I legitimately have no idea what he's talking about, but I could listen to it all day. So, Beg Milk, you always say that if you have the opportunity between Dreisaitl and McDavid to put a microphone in front of their face, always put it in front of Dreisaitl, right? Me. Yep. What if we, and hear me out on this, mm-hmm. we had a dual podium. Hmm. Dreisaitl on the right, Clib Costin on the left. Both had great games. They interview them at the same time. How good is the interview quality like obviously they're maybe not friends and stuff yet but like i want this i kind of want it to happen i want to see what happens i think that klim's got a funnier personality uh in terms of goofiness and dry has probably got better zingers and i just kind of want to see them in tandem because i think it would work really well but i wanted your thoughts on this so let me know i like that clean costin's a little cheeky you know we posted that picture on Oilers Nation's Instagram when he was pretending to be in the scrum holding his stick up as he was an interviewer. I love when people have a little bit of a cheeky attitude and they've got a little bit of shenanigans in them. So if Clem Costin wants to step up and him and Leon want to do like a straight man, uh, you know, funny man guy, I, I love it. Let's see it. Let's see it. More personality is never going to be a bad thing in the NHL. Not to me anyway. This is This is entertainment. And I don't understand why we've lost that. Get pucks deep. Nobody cares about that shit. Tell me something interesting. Tell me something interesting. Yo, what's up, Bag Milk? What's up, buddy? Uh, Two messages from my dude Ben in the same week. I like this. Ben, what do you got on your mind today? Hopefully the Oilers win tonight. Recording this on, what is it? Is it a Tuesday? Ben, you are too young to not remember what day it is. You still got school to do. Actually, I don't know that for a fact. When does school let out for the Christmas break these days? It's the 14th. I imagine you're still in there, but what the fuck do I know? I don't have kids. Oops, I shouldn't be swearing with you on there anyway. No, it's a Monday. It's a Monday. Recording this on a Monday. Mm. So yeah, hopefully the Oilers win, and hopefully I get this out. They didn't win, Ben. The narrator. They did not win. 
Uh, my favorite part of Christmas. Yeah, hit probably me. Probably the presents. Of course. To be honest. Of course. Of course, you're a young man. Christmas is all about running downstairs and seeing what you got under that tree. 100%. I don't begrudge you. You don't even have to say it being honest. I'm 37. I love to see what I get for presents, too. I'm not even going to lie about it. Don't even sweat that. And then my question for for you. Sure. Um, what do you think about Jack Campbell? I personally think he'll bounce back, but I think he needs to get a few starts. I understand that you have to, like, ride the hot hand, but you got to put Campbell in the net sometimes. Like, I'm pretty sure Skinner's had five straight starts. Hasn't looked to see if Campbell was starting tonight, which is Monday night, against the Wild. So, yeah, hoping he plays well if he does start. And then heard the Big Air contest was good, but... I couldn't go. I was celebrating Cinco de Mayo with my family. So, <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, shit. Even the kids are taking shots at Tyler. Celebrating Cinco de Mayo with my family. That's fucking hilarious. Ben, I love you, buddy. Keep leaving, <laughs> keep leaving voicemails all you want. Uh, to answer your question, though, what do I think about Jack Campbell? I think it's going to take him some time. I think that, um, you know, he's in a city, he's got a big ticket, and that's probably affecting him on a human level, probably. He's probably stressing himself out. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know him. We had that brief interaction at a red light weeks ago, but since then, we haven't chatted. I've tried to. Actually, I haven't. But I don't know. So I'm going to guess that's bothering him, and the fact that he's playing poorly obviously is going to bother him. But the good news is, last night, last night, uh, he played fine. Outside of that first goal, outside of the first goal and the first shot, I think he played fine. Finished with 29 saves and a 906. It's not ideal. It's not the greatest start you're ever going to see from anybody, but Jack Campbell locked the door, shut things down with 30 minutes left, and you got to take it. You got to take it. Who's next? Let's go, baby. Tyler Uramchuk here, a.k.a. The Grinch. And despite the obvious physical similarities, there's a few other reasons people are comparing me to The Grinch this holiday season. A, I've been stealing things. The beat cast from arguably, no, not even arguably, <laughs> let's just flat out say it, a superior host, Bag Mel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, me, not. I'm not. I've been stealing a lot of people's enjoyment tuning into Oilers Nation Radio as soon as I start talking. C, one of the most disappointing, gritty attempts of recent memory. <laughs> I have to publicly apologize for that. It's Tyler Uremchuk here. I suck. <laughs> uh, lest anyone think that was actually Tyler, it was not. That was not Tyler. And I will also say he is a much better host than me. Don't get it twisted. Hey, Bag Mel. Yo. Um, so it was like maybe almost a month ago, maybe it was like three weeks ago. And I think it was either on Oilers Nation or Real Life. You mentioned that you shit your pants. And I think <laughs> the people deserve to just hear that story. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but it, I shit my pants recently. <sighs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm trying to think. Recently in 2022, if I shit my pants, probably probably the most embarrassing time that I've ever shit my pants. And I'm going to tell you this one. I think I probably have already told this story, but a few, like before I worked at Oilers nation full time, I was working for a big company and I straight up shit my pants at work. I straight up shit my pants at work. I was at my desk in a little cubicle and I tried to sneak out a little tootski. But what happened was a sweatpants, a pair of sweatpants full of crud, you know? And I remember waddling over to the bathroom with my ass cheeks clenched, hoping that it wasn't bleeding through my sweatpants because yes, I was wearing sweatpants at work. And I was just completely terrified that people were going to smell my shitty ass. But what I did was I cleaned myself up as best as I could. I crumpled up my glow in the dark alien underwear and I threw them in the garbage can and I covered it slightly with a paper towel. <laughs> Podcast confessions. Uh, a couple of weeks ago though, I don't remember. Was it when I had COVID? I feel like that might have been when I had COVID. Because if it was then, uh, I absolutely sharded. But I, I don't know if I consider that a shit in my pants. 
I sharded though when I had COVID. I thought I was going to get one out. I was drinking a lot of NyQuil. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be honest with you. It was not good. It was not good. What is going on? Um, question of the week. What is my favorite thing about Christmas? Um, Nick, are you in like a dungeon? Are you in prison? Why are you so quiet? Why are you whispering? Are you in a library? Well, I think my voicemail made it in. Um, my least favorite part of Christmas is exam season, mm-hmm. which I am, I gotta say, in the thick of right now. Um, I just did a Bio 2000 um, at, at exam this morning. Um, I bet you I studied for that exam more than I studied for any exam in my life, and I don't think I got 65% on it. Brutally tough, mentally draining. But that being said, my favorite part of Christmas is actually the opposite. Um, there's no work. There's nothing to worry about. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned on the voicemail here. Um, I am a massive skier. I love to ski. I ski all the time whenever I can. So I love Christmas. Get away. Go to the mountains. Ski every fucking day. Don't have to worry about school. Nothing. It is the best. You were very quiet there, Nick. I don't know if I knew that you ski. I like that. I like skiing. It's a great time. Go check out Jasper. Uh, they sponsor Weather's Nation Radio. But, uh, yeah, I'm mostly concerned about why you were so quiet on that voicemail. Bag milk. I didn't get to watch the game versus the Wild on Monday. I you didn't, you, you, I'm not really upset about it. Let me tell you, consider yourself lucky that you missed that one. It was awful. Met a cool lady going out again so nice not that bad of a night for me nice shout out to the ladies shout out to the better late than never listeners for finding new partners and getting out there on the scene i respect it that girl that moved to leduc said there was no dating scene and this voicemail well lying i was thinking after i looked back at the stats and stuff and the goals and everything like that uh to see how everything went uh, I realized that Stuart Skinner is playing out of his mind. Yeah, and he he's been super good. How do you tell him if Jack Campbell gets up and running that we need you two to share the net? When this kid has been phenomenal. I've already put a bet down. Stu for Calder after tonight. Like, I did it at 3 in the morning. I had to make sure something was on there because even though like Matty Beneers is having a great season, if Stuart Skinner somehow steals the job from an established NHL goalie and goes on a run like he is for the rest of the year for some reason, maybe we're not talking about Matty Beneers in a couple of months. Interesting question. Still, even in my heart of hearts, as much as I want to buy into Stu for Calder, I just, I just assume because we're the Oilers, we're going to get fucked out of it somehow. We're going to be like, oh, well, Matty Beneers played more games than Stuart Skinner. And then you're like, well, goalies don't play every day. And you're like, well, it doesn't matter. They're going to move the goalpost somehow. But how do you tell them that they got to split the net? I imagine Stu's I imagine that Stu's going to be fine with it. I imagine that Stu is going to be fine with it. I think that he's probably going to be a supportive teammate, just like Jack Campbell is for him right now. So I'm actually imagining that those two's relationship is going to be fantastic over the next couple of years. I have nothing to base that on. I'm just guessing. Mostly based on Stuart Skinner's mustache. I respect a guy with a mustache. What's the best part about Christmas? Well, for me, it's got to be, it's changed now. When I was a kid, you could never really figure out why your parents were just like so content to just sit on the couch or in the chair with their little cup of coffee. I'm a product of divorce surveyor, Brett. I didn't get uh, that image. I got one of them, not two of them. Sorry to bum you up. (laughs) And watch as you (laughs) tore open the gifts, ran to the tree. Daddy, where? Daddy, why are we by myself? Cuz, open your fucking Lego. (laughs) That's not actually how it was at my house at all. My dad was very, very nice. I don't know why I said that. And now that I'm a father, I have an eight-year-old, so I've seen it a few years now. Ah, yes. Just sitting there and watching my son get to open his presents that we got him and his Santa gifts, and he's so fired up. Totally. And I just sit there with my coffee, and I just watch... I don't even care what I get. Me and my wife don't really buy each other that much anymore. Yeah, who needs anything? It's all about the kids' presents. Yeah, man. 
that's the best part for me. Having kids, I understand, changes everything. People always say that, and I totally buy it. I just don't have kids. You know, I have a dog. Do I buy Frank presents? I already did. I bought him a bunch of shit. I spoil that dog. So I'll probably spoil a kid eventually if that ever happens for me. But at this point, I absolutely get that when you have a kid, everything changes on Christmas and it's all about them and it's not about you. Where I actually thought you were going to go, Brett, is that you were just, I wonder why mom and dad are sitting there so happily on the couch just drinking their coffee. I just thought you were going with that. It's just all booze. There's not even any coffee in there. That's where I thought it was going. But you're a better person than I am, Brett. You're a better person than I am. Okay, I just gave you my my best part of Christmas. I want to go back to last week for the, one of the worst things. People that love New Year's Eve. If you're over 25 and you're super into New Year's Eve, I can't stand you. Like, no. The- I'm buying in on this one. I have never been a New Year's person, even when I was a teenager. Like, you know, when you first start maybe going to house parties or anything like that, that's when it started for me. I remember my first New Year's house party. I was about 14 or 15. Even then, I was not overly excited about New Year's. I don't give a shit. I don't care. It's the same shit the next day. At least I got a day off. And then now, these days, like, who knows? Maybe the Oilers, I don't even know if the Oilers play on January 1st this year. But if they do, I'm working. So it's not even a day off for me calendar changed over it's a new year it's the same week as it was before ridiculous oh the ball dropped stupid i hate it and people that say happy new year's past like the first week oh i hate you even more you're the worst (laughs) the worst (laughs) sir vera brett not a new year's fan uh happy new year brett happy new year Hey, Big Milk. I kind of just wanted to rant a little bit. Do you ever get tired of, you know, the we should trade Yessie, trade Yessie or? Yes. Yes. I do. I don't even know where the rest of this voicemail is going, but yes, I do. I even said it on Oilers Nation Radio yesterday, and this isn't a shot at Yes Pugliarvi at all, but I'm actually looking forward to this whole thing being over and him being traded or whatever happens, just so that we have a different conversation. I know that is he's still going to be involved. I know people are going to be like, look at what Yasapuli Arvey's doing with the Carolina Hurricanes or whatever. And at least that's different than what we're getting now. So to answer the first part of the question, 11 seconds into this voicemail, yes, yes, I do. Very, very tired of it. Don't trade yes. Like at this point, I kind of just want him to get traded so that we can. Exactly what I said. Exactly what I said. At least we get a different flavor. I'm tired of eating the same ice cream over and over again. Eventually, I want a different flavor. And right now, this one just feels like the same ice cream. Just kind of stop talking about it. Because frankly, don't you just kind of find it exhausting that every time we're talking about this? Because, you know, that stupid idiot Spectre makes a fucking article. And, like, also, can't he just get fired? Like, (laughs) we've just had enough of him. And I don't really think that... We deserve this, and, you know, yes, he doesn't deserve it. Like, I would like him to stay on the team, and you know what? Like, if we can't get something for him, like, you guys kind of say, yo, get trade him at the deadline, you know, get something for him because we aren't going to qualify him. Well, really, if he's playing decent enough, then, like, let's just keep him for the year, not qualify him, and let him walk. Like, those picks aren't going to help us now when we need it. They're going to help us in a few years when, you know, either the window is closing or like it just doesn't really matter the only thing i would counter there is i would tend to agree on the value of draft picks here in 2022 unless the plan the plan was to package those picks up as part of a bigger trade that's the that's the only counter i would have otherwise i don't i think your logic is pretty sound quick side note from uh, liam playing secret hitler my buddy (laughs) actually is friends with a guy who actually helped write the game so there's a little uh, info grab for you. That is an info grab. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, Secret Hitler is a board game apparently that Liam was playing over the weekend. He brought this up out of nowhere yesterday on Oilers Nation Radio, and it really caught us all off guard. So 
knowing the guy who helped write the game, that is super interesting. What does that even entail writing a, a board game? I'd love to know. That's fascinating. Hook me up with that guy. I want to talk to him. Hey, Bag Milk. I saw that your question of the week was, again, what is the worst part of Christmas? And I thought, you know, you appreciate positivity more than anyone. Um, so I thought I would share my favorite thing about Christmas instead of the worst. And I personally have, over the past couple of years, started enjoying giving gifts more than receiving. Um, I don't know why. That's very magnanimous, magnanimous of you. Good for you, Dan. I also like giving presents out. I do. I'm one of those people where, you know, you do the family gift exchange or whatever, and they set a limit at, I don't know, say $20, $30. doesn't matter what it is. I'm always the person that I'm going to go way over that. Like in my family, this year, I got my niece's name in uh, in the draw, and our limit for our like close family was 50 bucks, and I easily doubled that. I didn't mean to. I just got out of, just got carried away, you know? It, it it's it's fun for me to try and find something that you know i think someone may have wanted or not uh necessarily have known they needed uh and and give it to them for christmas so i think that's super cool um but if we're really being honest mariah carey oh my lord that song is overplayed and it is absolute junk um if we could figure out a new christmas song that would be super sweet yeah, I don't I don't get what it is with Christmas songs. Just like, where are the new ones? Like, all I want for Christmas is you is a great jam. I'm not going to say it's not. Like, I don't hate it like a lot of people do. But by the 15th time I've heard it that day, well, I could be down for some new ones. One thing the Rogers Wrapped in Red event commercial has taught me. <laughs> number one, I will never get a phone from Rogers. <laughs> number two, I will never get a phone from Rogers. And number three, I will never get a phone from Rogers. Turn that freaking commercial off the TV. No more. Please. For the love of God, help us all. <laughs> I guess I'm never going to get a sponsorship with Rogers, hey? One day, like, could you imagine is right after I post this episode that I get an email from Rogers. It's like, hey, Bag Milk, this is Craig from Rogers. We'd like you to support our shitty commercials. <laughs> And then I'd have to come back on here next week and be like, listen, guys, I don't know what you guys are talking about this Rogers commercial, but I absolutely love it. I think it's super clever and fun and catchy. <laughs> Again, I said this last week. I don't know if I've seen a commercial this universally hated outside of that uh, that Tim Hortons like vanilla cold brew or whatever that one was from last year. That one was awful. But this one is it's run. It's right up there for a, as a contender. Okay, so I, I got two things to say. One about Nashville uh, and another thing about Rexall. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, overall, I think the way they played last night was, really, you know, it was a little sloppy, but they got it together. A little bit, yeah. And Bell, you know, played pretty good. You know, 906, it's uh, above league average. Um, I'm happy to see his confidence uh, go up. Uh Leon owns that city. We should, honestly, I think as Oilers fans, we should start sending uh, the Nashville mayor uh, some mail and just be like, resign, dry is in charge now. Uh, fuck. Oh, and a big fuck you to the Edmonton government or whoever whoever the hell thought demoing Repsol was a, you know, just a good idea. Like, there's so much history in that building. Like, so much history that you could honestly call it historic. Oh, fuck, this is going to... I'm running out of time shit. <laughs> um, I'll have to give this in this. Um, yeah, uh, big fuck you. That area needed to be re re redeveloped. Uh, yeah, but what the fuck? It could have turned into a lot of things. That one's tricky. I'm with you on the emotional side of it. We're at Rexall Place. I've got so many amazing memories in there. My first NHL game was in there. The 2006 playoffs were in there. Um, I went to a lot of those. I just went to a bunch of games in there. I remember the first tickets I ever bought myself for anything was a game there. So there's a lot of memories for me in that building. But if you're thinking about it from like a business side of it or the city side of it, maintaining that empty building is very expensive. And it's we're talking millions of dollars just to keep it upright and standing. And I just, they don't want to do it. 
They don't want to do it. It's going to be sad, and I know we're going to cover it at OilersNation.com, but I kind of see both sides on it. I kind of see both sides on it. I wish it could have been redeveloped into something else. I wish that we could have done and come up with an idea that would work, but based on everything I've read about it so far, they just couldn't get close to something like that. And is there time to save it? Maybe, but I doubt it. And it's going to be a sad day, man. It's going to be a sad day to see that come down. No question about it. Last voicemail of the week. For fuck's sake. I, I really just made a voicemail. I went to send it, and then I deleted it. <laughs> Uh huh. And it sounds like that got cut off too because I've got you saying I tried to send it and I deleted it and the clock on this voicemail is still running but there's no sound coming through. So I've got five seconds of audio and about 85 seconds of nothing at all. So my guy, I apologize. I apologize to whatever's going on there but that's what wrapping up the voicemail is. Please keep sending me voicemails. We got a lot this week. This is the most voicemails I've had in quite some time. Generally speaking, though, I think that this segment's probably a little bit too long. So if I get this many voicemails in a week, I'm probably just going to do a voicemail episode of the podcast. Keep this kind of standard format and then do a bonus chunk with just your voicemails. Because ultimately, I want your feedback to come in, right? So I don't want to say, wow, we can't have so many voicemails or else the podcast gets too long. So I'm going to come up with something different maybe when I've got this many. Because what do we got here today? One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Uh, five, six. So there's 24 voicemails today that came in. So that's a lot. So next time this happens, I'm probably just going to do a side episode. But until then, we're going to say goodbye. I'm going to say thank you to the audio department and to Trilogy Oilfield Rentals and to my friends at Betway. If you want to come with us to Toronto, I recommend it. The tickets are still available on nationgear.ca. And for our friends at Tourism Jasper, I'm going to tell you that there's a hockey tournament coming up in January that we're going to be a part of. Again, we're going to have some more details coming out on OilersNation.com soon. I was at that event last year. If you are able to come and we're thinking, but like it's going to be late January. So just keep that in your mind. Tourism Jasper is going to put on an absolute show out at the JPL. And I promise you're going to want to be there. I'm going to have more details for you on that coming up very soon on the website and of course on this podcast but until then i say thank you please keep leaving your some reviews tell some friends i want to keep growing as we go into 2023 i'm not going to stop even on christmas week i'm gonna have a fresh podcast for you but until then until tomorrow when the oilers win 4-2 against the st louis blues i will wish you goodbye and i will end off with a song from my friend meat watcher